first and foremost, we're going to give all praises to Yahweh, by uh, Shem Yahweh Shai, the double honors to the apostles, the elders of GMS who rule well, the Brock of Thomas, to all you Aki, the hopeful elect that's out there pushing this truth on the four corners of the globe. We are here for the elect of the 12 tribes of Israel, Judah, the so called Negroes, Benjamin, the so called West Indian Jamaicans, Levi, the so called Haitians, Ruben, the so called Seminole Indians, Gad, the so called North American Indians, Issachar, the so called Mexicans, Zebulon, Guatemala, and Panama, and after the so called uh, Cubans, even the so called Puerto Ricans, uh, Col Ashes, Colombia, Uruguay, and Naphtali, Argentina, to Chile. These are the 12 tribes of Israel. When Yahweh Shai is coming to Dean, one third the elect. Hey, two thirds is set up for the destruction. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, Ezekiel 37 and 15. Talawan, brother. This is Ezekiel 37 and 18. Uh, when I put the sign up, a guy had walked by and he asked me what it was. So when I was getting ready to explain it, he walked off. So before he put the camera on, so I'm going to read the scripture, right? Edify Israel. Because we come out, we, have the, we, have a, we all have a sign up, right? It says, Ezekiel 37 and 15, it says, The word of the Lord came, unto, came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thy son of man, take thee one stick and write up on it <coughs> for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. It said, take the stick, right? So when you look that word up, it goes into a plank. So we take the, the uh, stick and for one hand, we write the tribe of Judah, who are the southern kingdom, right? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, so-called Negroes, so-called uh, Haitians, and the West Indian, Jamaicans, right? And it says, and for the children of Israel, his companion, then take another stick and write up on it. So on the other side, we would write Israel for the Northern Kingdom. Reuben, Gad, Issachar, Manasseh, uh, Ephraim, Naphtali, and Ashton. We would write that on the other side of the stick, right? And it says, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companion, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. So, if you make the correct stick, it will be actually a plank over here with the southern kingdom on it, and then a plank over here with the northern kingdom on it, you know, and you bring them two together. So, you know, we make our sticks, we, we write the names all the way down. So you would join them together. That's the house of Israel. It says, And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thy not show us what thou meanest by thee? So when they come by, that's why we have these, these, uh, the sign right here. Because they're going to come by and they're going to look on there. And they're going to ask, hey, what, what, what does this mean? Who is this? I'm a Negro. Why, why is that Judah? They're going to ask. And then we have to explain. You know? Or a so-called Mexican might come by and point at the name Mexican. And then we explain to him that he's Issachar. The children of Israel. That's why we have the sign out here. It says, verse 19. Say unto them, thus saith the Lord Yahweh. Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in thy hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel's fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in thine hand. So we bring those two, two sticks together. That's the nation of Israel, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. That's why we have this sign out here, man. You know, dude asked me, you know, what's that about? Right when I got ready to tell him, he just kept walking, so he didn't really want to know. Plus, it's like eating might anyway, so, you know. So that's why we have this, this chart, this stick out here, man. Uh, let's see. We'll read this, this in Romans. 
This is Romans 13 and 11. It says, in that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our Merry salvation. Merry brothers. You, you celebrate Christmas? Celebrate. I've celebrated Christmas. You just don't. No, I'm not. Just yes, because I got a bottle in my hand don't mean nothing. But Bible let me tell you something. Oh, 20, 20, 36 years ago, we buried my daddy. 33 you years don't. ago, we buried my aunt. I celebrate Jesus Christ's birthday it's every birthday. year. It don't say that in the Bible. I didn't say nothing about what it said in the Bible. Well, you're the devil then. No, I'm not yeah. the devil. Yes, you are. It said you can drink, but don't get drunk. It. Well, they ain't got nothing to do with what you just said. You said so. I celebrate the, the Give me Christ's Jeremiah birthday. 10. Read this. Jeremiah 10 and 1. It says, Hear ye the word of Yahweh speaking unto you, O children of Israel. Israel. Talking about Israel. Thus Israel. saith the Lord, lean not, lean not, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking and about. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Go ahead. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Go ahead. For the customs of the people are vain. For the customs of the people are empty. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with a hammer that it move not. That's a Christmas tree. It's a Christmas tree. It said learn it's not exactly. to the heathen. Okay, the heathers are right back yonder in that garage. <laughs> believe me or not, believe me or not. Oh man, you, you're not. No, not believe funny. me or not. Because it says, you know what their Christmas for the tree made out of? For the customs of the people are vain. For one could they treat out of the forest the work of the hands of the workmen with an ax. They, you an eater, Mike. they deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, and it moved not. You an eater, Mike. Give me from uh, Revelation 11 chapter. Come. Revelation. You an eater, Mike. You out of there. The that's Revelation. That's why you had to celebrate Christmas. I like, I like, I like you your camera. Mike. I like your camera. You better stay out of here. I, I like. I used to work, be raised in the woods. Uh -oh. Yeah, I know it. I, uh -oh. I know. Man well, I, of the field. No, You're a man of the field. I'm, I'm a man of the country. I was You're raised, a man of the field. I was made. Hey, how you like your, how you like, if I cook you a steak, how you like it? Well medium, done or medium rare? Medium, medium rare. No, oh, medium shit. <laughs> Revelation. What chapter you know? one, brother? 11? First verse. Me, medium, medium Remember rare. Remember that <laughs> Medium <laughs> slave. Medium rare to medium well. Just exactly. <laughs> exactly. How did I know? I don't like it. Saying? I don't like it. Done, done. <laughs> but I don't like it. Right. You know? I know it. Go ahead. Revelation 11 and 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. Right. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of God Go ahead. and the altar Go and ahead. them that worship therein. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But the court which is without the temple leave out. Leave out. Go ahead. And measure it not. Go ahead. For it is given unto the Gentiles. That's you. So you're not in the temple of the heavenly father. You're blocked. I you can't am. come into this. Okay. It's like a barricade. It's like a barricade. Okay, it's like a spiritual right barricade. Between me and you. No, the temple it's of the right, heavenly father. The temple like of the heavenly father, you can't come in. This is a barricade. I Come. can't get through this. It there. says, and the you holy city shall tread under foot 40 in two months. All right, read at the top of it. Come. Come. Revelation 11 and 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. Yeah, you supposed to measure the temple of Yahweh Shemashah. And Edomite's not in the temple of Yahweh Shemashah. Get out of there. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead, bro. Con, it says, and measure the temple of the Most High and the altar and them that worship therein. Right. But the court which is without the temple leave out. The right. court which is without the temple leave out. Right, so he outside of the temple. That's the Edomite. Give me uh, Hebrews 12 and 16. And then give me Leviticus uh, 17 and 10. The book of Hebrews 12 and 16. Least there be any fornicators or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterwards when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. So he saw it rejected. That's why I was uh, 
by him saying, that by, by me asking how he like his meat, meat and prayer, he said, yeah, you know what they That's not, that thing was spiritual what happened. That thing was spiritual. It was above his, it was above his head. And see, what we were out here doing is measuring the temple through the spirit and power of the heavenly father and his son. And we out here reading these scriptures. So Israel, which the scriptures say, the sheep hear my voice. So Israel gonna stop and listen. Two thirds not gonna listen, and, a, and a Edomite not gonna listen. They gonna keep on moving. Cause they spiritually uh, uh, void of, of understanding of the heavenly father and his son. God. You know, this is not for them. They gonna, two thirds gonna die in that sin, the Esau, he's just gonna be destroyed anyway. God. But that's his, that's, that's his destiny, okay? He, he, he was designed to be destroyed. All right, that's his guess. Go ahead, bro. Con, Leviticus 17 and 10. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against the soul that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his feet. So, according to the scriptures, you're not supposed to do that. Esau is contrary to the heavenly father and his son. So Esau gonna do that. And see, when you go back to uh, Genesis, which your brother's gonna get it, to edify that, right? About the characteristics of Esau and how he is. That's why I asked him about that raw meat. Go ahead, bro. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it unto you upon, upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Yeah, so you're not supposed to eat meat or uh, bloody meat. But Esau, he's into that. Okay. That's, why, that's why I asked him how he liked his steak. And by him saying what he said, that confirmed the scriptures, right? Okay. And it was prophesied that that was going to be the characteristics of Esau. He said, I'm a man of the field. He said it. And he had a red beard, if y'all couldn't see it, he was red. Well, he's either, well, even, even if, even if, even if that, right, even if he didn't have that, and he had a blonde beard, he's still an Edomite, you know? The hair on some Edomites got black hair, you know? It don't matter, but the thing about it is, he's an Edomite, okay? Go ahead. It's Genesis 25 and 24, in winter days, to be, be, be delivered were from field. Behold, there were twins in her womb. That's talking by uh, Esau and Jacob. Now this is a story about Isaac and his wife, Rebecca, and this is going into uh, how Esau came about and how Jacob came about, okay? So this is a uh, prophecy and this history. Go ahead. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. So here go the characteristics of the first one, which is Esau. And they do the characteristics of him. And they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. Okay? And Esau in the Hebrew is Aishashwa, which means wasted the way it seems. Go ahead. Verse 26. And after that came out his brother. After that came his brother out. Which is Jacob. Right? Go ahead. And he took, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Well, that's symbolic for us bringing Esau down, starting with Yahweh was shot. And then Israel going to come up underneath Yahweh was shot and bringing uh, Esau down. Okay? That's what that's symbolic for. Go ahead. And his name was called Jacob. And his name, and his name is called Jacob. And Jacob in the Hebrew is Jaiqua, which means to plant. Go ahead. And Isaac was three score years old when he buried him. What, three score years old? So he's 60. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. And Esau was a cunning hunter, meaning he had to learn. You see, he had to learn in order to, uh, how to hunt food. Because see, think about Esau. When Esau was born, uh, brought forth in the earth, he had to learn certain things because he was incomplete. Okay? He wasn't complete as a person. Okay? Go ahead. He said that the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. Yeah, so he liked the field. That's why he was uh, commending the commending, uh, uh, cow on his uh, camo. Because that's what Esau liked. He liked that camo so he can hide, you know, because he don't know how to actually trap, trap, and track the animals naturally. 